So I'm gonna set up this uh, Napier 84,000, I believe. I'll double check and put it somewhere on the video. I'm gonna set this up and I'm going to walk you through it and give you kind of a two and a half year review of it. Tent stake hammer, tent stakes, poles, Napier 84,000. So this comes with two straps, two buckle straps that you can use when you roll the tent up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is basically just position the tent to where what they call the umbilical, which is the part that goes up over the back hatch of the car. Um, we're gonna position the tent so that the umbilical faces the back hatch of the car. So this is a close up of the Napier 84,000 all laid out on the ground. This section right here is what they call the umbilical. It is pulled up over the hatch of the car. And then this part over here is the screen room. And it is an additional room that comes out on the driver's side of the vehicle. So at this point, what I need to do is move it a little bit closer to the car. And what I'm gonna do, because the dogs are in the car, so I'm not gonna actually open the hatch, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna pull the umbilical up over my stowaway. And I'm just gonna show you a, a close-up of this umbilical. So you can see that there's, it's a heavier duty material here on the umbilical. This part goes underneath the car um, above the tailpipe. So because I have the stowaway on the back, and this does take up quite a bit of space inside the tent, I'll show you that once it's up, but I actually like it because I have a table set up in the stowaway. So it acts as my kitchen table when I, I'm in there. I don't have to pack an extra table. Um, but anyway, when I set this up, it's a little tricky because I have to put the umbilical up around the stowaway. It also means that I have to unzip the door um, so that this can go through it. So that's what I'm going to do right now is just get in here and unzip the door. All right, so that is fully unzipped. Now I can put the stowaway through the tent door. <laughs> now I'm just going to tie the straps to my railing. All right, so this is the strap that goes around your railings if you have them. It's just a buckle clip. One side is a flat nylon strap, the other side is a bungee. And then down here you can see this is the clip that just clips inside your tire well. And you can tighten these down and everything. Mine are pretty much set where they need to be because I've used this so much. So in the middle top part of this tent is a little disc that looks like this, where you stick the poles. These are the poles for the roof. So these blue ones actually go to the screen room. So we'll put these together and set those aside. What we want for the ceiling are these small gray ones. So you're just gonna sit one end of the pole in a hole in the disc. And then for this end of the pole, you're gonna wanna put it in the side of this toggle that is the smallest. It has little grooves in it that makes it smaller because this pole is smaller than the pole that you're gonna put in this end that is the side pole. So you just wanna make sure to put your ceiling poles in the side of this toggle that has the grooves in it. So same thing with this one, you're going to want to put this end in the grooved part. Oh, is that the wrong pole? There is one tiny gray. Yep, that's the wrong pole. <laughs> so there is one gray pole. <laughs> that doesn't go in the ceiling, and it's the smallest diameter pole. Doesn't go in the ceiling. That's why I was having trouble. This is why I usually do time lapses of this part of my setup. <laughs> All right, so this is the last ceiling pole, and it's a little bit trickier because you wanna not step on your screen room when you do it. So you just have to be careful of where you're stepping. And there's your ceiling. Now we're gonna start putting the side poles in. And the side poles are these black poles.
So on these side poles, you're going to notice that one end has a metal tip to it. The other end is just a hollow end. The hollow end is going to actually go in your toggle up here. It's going to go in this thing. And this metal tip right here is going to go into a grommet in the floor of the tent. So you can put this end first, find your grommet, and then stick this point into the grommet. So here you can see the grommet that that metal tip goes into. Now we're just going to go around the rest of the tent and do the others. Now, on the screen room side of this tent, there's actually two grommets, and the, the poles that go to the screen room actually use the outer grommet. So once you have all the side poles in, you can go around and pull these clips around them. So you should have two clips on each pole. Now we can go around and just pull, pull the poles out so that they're not leaning. So now you can see we've got a little bit more structure to our tent. The blue poles go to the screen room. But first, this other little gray pole that I tried to put in the ceiling. So you'll see that there's this little blue sleeve across the top of the screen room. That's where this last smaller diameter gray pole goes. So you're going to use the side of the toggle that has the grooves in it. You want the smaller end, so just check each end. The other end does not have grooves. You put this top pole in the groove end of the toggle, and it's the same thing on this side. And now we can use our blue poles. And it's the same thing. It has a metal tip in one end, and then it's hollow in the other end. So we want the hollow end up. And we're going to put that hollow end in the other end of the toggle. And then we're going to put the pointy tip in the outer grommet and we'll do the same thing on this side. So you can see here the two grommets, the actual tent pole, the black pole, goes in the inner grommet and the screen room pole or the blue pole goes in the outer grommet. Okay, so now what's left to do is take the stakes and go around and stake out the screen room and stake out the four corners of the tent. There are a couple of tent loops in between the four corners. So you're basically going to pull the screen room out at an angle from the pole. And you may have to adjust it a little bit after you get the stakes in. That actually looks really good, so I'm going to go ahead and hammer them all the way in. And then you've got a loop right here in the center that you can use as well. And then I'm going to do the four corners of the tent. And there are two loops in the center that you can use as well. And that's it, pretty much. So I will tell you, putting the rain fly on this by myself has been tricky. I've only had to do it once. West Texas, we don't get much rain, so I don't really use it that often. I've, I did have to put it on one time and I used the remaining two poles. The rainfly has a little awning that comes out and then you can put those poles in it and have a little front porch. The one time I did put the rainfly on, I used those two extra poles to kind of lift the rainfly up over the tent. It was hard. <laughs> I didn't think I was ever going to get it done, but it is possible with one person to do it because I did it. First things first, I'm going to take you inside and show you what it looks like. <laughs> I love the zippers. I've never had an issue with the zippers at all. I love the length of the cord on it. They're super easy to pull. Look how dirty my floor is. Oof. This is the umbilical and it looks like I need to just push it back. Push it back over the hatch just a little bit so I've got room to open it. And you can see that there's an elastic piece that comes down around the car. And then there's this inner flap that just lays down over it. Now, you'll notice that all of this is kind of loose. That's where the hatch goes when I open my hatch and pull it up. Because I have this hitch mounted box, this won't pull up around it, obviously. So this door is kind of just not functional now that I have the box. But when I didn't have the box, this pulled up and there's another door here. So you could uh, leave your hatch open, but close this door. And there is a screen to it. So you could unzip the uh, screen part of it. You can see on the edge here, again, what I pointed out earlier, there's this elastic layer and then there's this flap 
that just comes down around it. So the hatch is actually supposed to go underneath this blue ridge. <laughs> Um, and because I set it up without the hatch being open, it didn't really work out the way it was supposed to, but basically I should pull the car forward a little bit. The hatch should be in this gray area right here. And this blue lip actually comes down over on this side of the hatch. I could just pull the car forward a hair. So very carefully. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, see now how that blue lip comes down over my hatch, that's the way it's supposed to be. Sometimes it's hard to get it perfectly centered around the hatch. Generally speaking, like you can see that this is double seamed and double supported right there. So the corner of your hatch is supposed to like hit right there, but mine doesn't always work that way. There's also a little gear loft that attaches to these loops up here. I don't use it because I'm not tall enough to put stuff up there. Um, but I do hang my lantern off of this hook and I love that option. I'm 5'4 and like I would not be able to put anything in the gear loft if I hung it up. And I would need some kind of a step stool to hang it back up anyway, because I can't reach those loops. Did you eat a fly? Look at that sunset. So I hope that was helpful. I really enjoy this tent. Actually, I would highly recommend it. This is the 84,000 um, model, which I think is made for the smaller SUVs. It works really well with my Subaru Forester. I have gotten so much use out of it. It gives the dogs a little bit extra space to get up and walk around when we're car camping. I put my uh, portable toilet in the screen room, especially in the summertime. I love that option because I don't have to leave the dogs to go use the facilities. I can just use my portable toilet in the screen room. I absolutely love this tent. I bought mine from Cabela's and I get a military discount, so I, I think I did get it for a little bit cheaper, but I noticed that it is more expensive now than it was when I bought it. Everything has gone up, but it's just a great setup. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm happy to answer those if I can. Uh, it's not open, baby. Old coyotes, do you hear them? some breakfast.
it. Wait. 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 Look. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. They're a long ways away, Jackie. They're a long ways away. Just eat your breakfast. They're a long ways away, baby. Eat your breakfast. Eat your breakfast. All done. Stay right here. <clears throat> you drink, thirsty. You drink, thirsty. Load up. <clears throat> load up. Inside the tent and inside the car. Come on, load up. Good drink. Good drink first. Good job. Okay, heads in. So I'm getting ready to take this tent down and there's not much to this, but I'm just gonna talk you through it anyway. So the first thing that I usually do is make sure that all of my windows inside are zipped up and closed. And I'll go ahead and swing my stowaway back into place so it's easier to get the tin off over it. And then I'm just gonna close up the door here. Then I'm just gonna go around and unclip the side poles. And while I'm over here, I'm gonna go ahead and unclip the tire well, unclip the top railing, and just pull this umbilical off of the car. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a few stakes while I'm over here. And then what I'm gonna do is just take the screen room down. So I'll remove the screen room pole, the blue poles. Basically doing this in reverse order from how I put it up. Then we're just gonna remove the top screen room pole. Before I take these side poles out, I'm just gonna pull this off of my cargo box. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take down the side poles. The way I do it is I just step on the stake loop and pull it out. And then all that's left are these four gray poles for the ceiling. When I bought this tin, I'm pretty sure everything fit in this bag, including the pole sack and the stake sack. But I have never been able to get it all entirely back in there. I'm doing pretty good if I can just get the tent back in here and the fly. So I usually will leave the tent stakes and the pole sack out of the big bag and just load it in my cargo box separately. So now we're gonna fold this up. I try to find the four corners of the floor and keep those out where I can see them. So kind of pulling the rest of the tent inside a bit so you can see the very edge of the tent and grab the, the floor and the corners and just pull it out. 
And then on this side that has the umbilical, <clears throat> just throw the umbilical into the center. And then the screen room I pick up and I toss in the middle. You're looking for the, the main square floor of the tent. So as you can see, I've got ba the basic square of the 10 by 10 tent here and everything else is just thrown in the middle. I usually do try to even this out so that it's not just one big clump in the middle. So this is my square now and you can see that I've kind of tried to even this out so there's not like one big lump of material and hopefully this makes it easier to fold up and roll up. I'm just gonna start folding and I guess this way feels pretty good, so we're going to fold this way first. And we're going to just fold corner to corner. So in two years and four months, I only got one hole, and I patched it with gear aid tape. It was in the floor, so you can see. I can't even find this hole in, from the inside of the tent. It's patched up. It works great. I just now, as I was folding the tent up, found my second hole right here. And <clears throat> it's a little bitty one. That'll be easy to repair too. So two holes in two and a half years is not that bad. And I have two big dogs, so we're not particularly gentle with our gear. <laughs> so we've got one fold and I'm just gonna go around and straighten it all out. This is probably overkill, but I like to try to get this rolled up nice and small. So we're just gonna roll this over. And then I'm just gonna slowly walk across it on my hands and knees. This is a good way to check your tent floor for holes. Now we're gonna start rolling. And it's a good idea to brush out any debris. That abrasion is gonna cause weak spots in your floor. And there's a goat head. All right, I've got to go get my straps. It turned out that my video had stopped for some reason as I was tearing down the tent. As I was rolling up the tent to put it away, I did find three more holes, uh, one in the side fabric and uh, two more in the floor and a couple of weak spots. So when I get home, I'll probably unroll it in my driveway and try to clean it up and patch those other um, holes and weak spots. I bought that tent in November of 2020. So I would say that it's pretty good quality. As I was saying, I have two big dogs as it's obvious. <laughs> They're not particularly careful with gear. Um, sometimes they can be pretty hard on it. So for that tent to last us two and a half years or so and only have a few small holes and weak spots in the floor. I mean, that's pretty good in my opinion. And down here in West Texas, can't whistle this morning, goodness, stay here. Down here in West Texas, our ground is, is hard, dry, pokey. There's like goat heads and all kinds of stickers, thistles and stuff, and rocky. So, you know, putting the tent up anywhere, even in a designated spot, you're going to be on hard, rough ground. So that tent, I mean, I've more or less used it down here in West Texas. And so I've had it on really rough ground um, with lots of thistles and goat heads and things. So, um, and two big dogs inside of it. So, um, I would say it's done pretty well, honestly. Uh, the only thing is I'm not sure I would trust it in a hard rain. We don't get much rain down here, so I haven't really had to test it. I did take it out um, in some kind of wintry mix, rain, snow, and it kept me dry, but it wasn't like a pouring rain. And that particular time that I set it up and used it, it was really windy. You know, I kept watching the wind blow the fly up against the tent. You know, it would touch the tent, and of course, if your fly touches your tent, it's going to get your tent wet and it's probably going to seep through. So my guess is that it might not fare as well in a downpour with lots of wind anyway. Um, maybe it would be okay without wind. I don't know. But 
I'm not sure I would trust it in a heavy downpour. I guess at least it would cover your roof and that part would probably work fine because um, it's not touching the tent material. But the sides, um, particularly that side, the opposite side of the screen room, it just laid up against the tent material. Um, and also the screen room, I didn't feel like there was very much coverage of the fly on the screen room. So granted the screen room doesn't have a floor, so it's ground anyway. Maybe you wouldn't care if the screen room got wet, I don't know. But overall, like I said, I've really enjoyed that tent. It's given me and the dogs some more living space when we're out and about, especially when we're out for several days at a time. It's been really nice to be able to just, you know, open the hatch and sleep in the car, but have that, have that tent as extra living space and um, a little area where the dogs can kind of walk around and, and not be cooped up in the car. You can put this up by yourself. The rain fly is a little challenging to do by yourself, and I'm sorry I didn't demonstrate that this trip, but um, we got here kind of late yesterday and uh, I didn't want to fool with it. So maybe I'll do another video about the rain fly. But yeah, I think we're just going to enjoy this morning. It's really cool. Um, 45 degrees, um, nice light breeze. It's not too cold at all. It was a beautiful sunset last night and beautiful sunrise this morning. I can hear the sandhill cranes in the background. So we're going to just um, load up, I think, and see if we can see the cranes on our way out. Do you want to say hi to your fans? Come here. Say hi to your fans in the in the t in the TV. Come here. You want to sit up here? Come here. Up. Up. Nope. Turn around. Sit. Okay. Stay. Look right here. Jeffy, look right here. Yes. Say hi to your fans. Say hi. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Give it up, boo. You guys ready to go for a ride? Come on, go for a ride. Yeah? All right, load up. Heads in. <laughs>